ducks, khakis, Shaquille O'Neal. What do all of these things have in common? Why, car insurance, of course. Despite seeming unrelated, these random items are all joined together by the fact that they appear in some of the most well-known American insurance company ads of the past few decades. Since the turn of the century, TV commercials in general have taken on a more over-the-top, sometimes strange turn to capture their audience's attention. They've evolved into a phenomenon of their own, no longer only being about advertising, but fostering a sort of battle of the TV ads where each brand tries to be the funniest or craziest or most annoying. But while there are too many notable TV commercials to count, advertising things from useless infomercial products to snacks that'll turn your head into a giant fruit, insurance agencies are responsible for some of the most recognizable and culturally prominent ads of the 2010s especially. It sounds kind of weird to say that insurance companies, of all things, are such a big part of American pop culture, considering how mundane and, frankly, awful insurance can be on its own. But with this in mind, it seems that these commercials were designed to combat how frustrating and dull insurance filing can be. Instead of ads that feature a lot of jargon about claims and deductibles, most ads instead feature things like cavemen and a strangely varying amount of talking animals, creating an entire lineup of insurance company advertising mascots over the years. I'd like to take a look into the wide range of these mascots, from the classics to the fallen heroes, and try to understand the tangled web that is the insurance mascot cinematic universe. Flo from Progressive is a pretty recognizable character that always comes to my mind first when thinking on this subject. While there are others that have existed longer, I have such specific memories of seeing these ads that are a weird mix of a comedy sketch with insurance lingo shoehorned in to make for a very watered-down explanation of insurance policies. Flo first appeared in 2008 in what was meant to be a one-off ad that depicts the online insurance buying process as a transaction in a superstore. We have a savings of $350. A savings of $350. You know, that comes with concierge claim service, local response claim service, and 24-7 live support, all at no extra charge. Wow. Wow, I know. I say it louder. Have a great day. Ah, uh, I can still hear my dad walking around the house quoting, I say it louder. While it may not be the funniest sketch ever, the setting of a very recognizable stark white kind of liminal superstore and Flo's charming demeanor are a pretty successful attempt at making her quirky and relatable, which of course can only mean that Progressive as a whole is the most relatable and chillest of companies to purchase through, like the cool fun aunt of insurance providers. At least I assume that's the look they were going for. Progressive has had a few other ad campaigns over the years, which are helpfully listed in a dedicated section of their website. And see, this is what I mean. These ads and their characters are so integral to, obviously, the brand, but also to the general public and culture that they're carefully detailed and cataloged for the reference of, I can only assume, their fans. Fans of an insurance company mascot. That is so weird. Despite the other campaigns though, Flo has always stood out to me and seemingly pretty much everyone else the most, and since 2008, Flo has appeared in hundreds of ads over the years, still going strong as a featured character to this day. Flo was joined by her silly sidekick Jamie in 2014 and three other members sometime after to make up what Progressive calls Flo and the Squad. With the help of these additional characters, what started as a simple superstore setup has evolved into a sort of progressive commercial sitcom, placing the characters in different wacky situations, each with their own dedicated personalities and tropes as members of the group. Sorry, members of the squad. Gotta keep it hip with the kids. From actual sitcom parodies to soap opera parodies and musical numbers, to Kool-Aid Man cameos and the canon of Flo's extended family all just being versions of her in different wigs and outfits, the ads have reached a point where they've extended beyond the Superstore and seemingly only exist to keep the Flo fans entertained. Jake from State Farm is another example of a human insurance mascot, though he's pretty different from the Flo squad. Back in 2011, Jake from State Farm, an actual State Farm employee, was featured in only one commercial. Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. 
What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so. Despite the clip only being 30 seconds long, Jake's two-word line of, uh, khakis seemed to really stick with everyone who caught this ad on TV. There were memes, there were parodies, and dang it if there weren't tons of kids in my middle school constantly quoting the advertisement of a company that sells things they don't even know how to use. I mean, have you ever met a 12-year-old that understands premiums and indemnity? I sure hope not, because that stuff still confuses me now. If you're outside of the US or otherwise just never saw this ad, it may not look like much and may not even seem that funny. I mean, the whole thing is based on a joke around infidelity, which when looking at it objectively and outside of the context of this sketch, kind of seems like a weird thing for an insurance company to include in advertising, but it was just one of those things where you had to be there. The simplicity of the commercial and quotability of the punchline seemed to bring people together in ways that Flo never could, with her pristine apron and weirdly tall hair. I know how silly it all sounds, but I'm a firm believer that it's the little things in life that are worth having fun with and holding on to. But it's hard to hold on to even the most beloved of khaki-wearing insurance reps when they're outright taken away from us. Well, sort of. Jake's commercial seemed to air for years after its initial debut, but even the best of advertisements must come to an end. Unless we're talking about the Tootsie Roll Pop commercial with the owl, which has been running for 53 years and seems to never come to an end. After a while, new ad campaigns for State Farm rolled in, and Jake was mostly forgotten and replaced by catchy jingles and magically appearing hot tubs. That is, until the fateful Super Bowl of 2020, when he returned just not quite in the same way as before. Because the original Jake from State Farm was an actual employee, he was never hired on for a full-time campaign because he was just a regular guy, not an actor. But State Farm didn't seem to want to drop the character that had gained them so much notoriety, so in 2020, the return of Jake was in a revamp of the original commercial, featuring a new Jake delivering the same iconic line from almost 10 years prior. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis? Hey, do they ever ask you what you're wearing? Uh, yeah. While the original Jake did appear in a cameo of this version of the ad, he was no longer the Jake we all used to know. Okay, none of it was actually that serious. It was still just an ad for an insurance company, of all things, so anyone that was a little bit attached to the original Jake probably forgot about his replacement not too long later. Or did they? For what was, again, such a simple initial promo and an even simpler character, once he was replaced, Jake from State Farm, the original, was clearly missed. More Jake-related memes were popping up around the internet, but instead of celebrating his khakis, they were boycotting the change and missing their favorite insurance guy. It's just a guy named Jake now! It's not like they've given him a personality. There's no personality to this guy at all. There's none. In the commercials, his entire personality trait in the commercials is, my name is Jake. Even if they didn't know he was initially a real employee, a lot of people seemed to miss the initial run of the Jake commercial because of how relatable it was. Maybe the relatability of a late night infidelity scandal wasn't the main takeaway, but this ad was casual and funny and just seemed so much less corporate than its competitors. While Flo does have comedic little quips and obviously has garnered fans of her own, Progressive's ads are all very scripted, clean, and corporate. Jake from State Farm provided just that little bit of relatable humor to the world of insurance ads, which, while it wasn't exactly needed, because it's still just insurance at the end of the day, the general public still seemed to enjoy it. Modern Jake was clearly an actor, a little too pristine and polished, and now served as basically just the State Farm version of Flow from Progressive. And after his replacement, State Farm's ads only doubled down on the corporateness of it all. While the original Jake was never signed on for any campaign, modern Jake was brought on as a full-time brand mascot. He encounters different adventures and silly situations, but always saves the day with a smile and some quip about neighbors and insurance policies. But it doesn't just stop at the TV commercials. While Flo has had a few social media profiles on Facebook and Twitter over the years, which seem to be going great, by the way, Jake takes it to an even further level. Between Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, this campaign goes beyond the TV commercials to really try and push Jake and his supposed relatability. 
There's Jake branded ASMR content, Jake branded thirst traps, Jake rating potatoes, Jake relatably hating to build IKEA furniture, the list goes on. And in addition to the diversified social media portfolio, there's also Jake ads featuring celebrities like Drake and NBA stars, a promotional bobblehead, an appearance in NBA 2K22 as an NPC, this is so weird, and even a cameo as a somewhat nightmarish model in the metaverse iHeartRadio Roblox land, because that's what Roblox was missing, Jake from State Farm. <laughs> It's weird to think that all of this was built off the back of a single little ad from 2011, but like I said before, the people who see these ads become strangely invested in their favorite mascots, and where there's any kind of press and notoriety around a brand, a company is of course going to milk it for all it's worth, even if it means making Jake from State Farm rate potatoes on TikTok. While the modern Jake seemed to morph into the State Farm version of Flo, there's not any explicit confirmation that he was set up to be a direct competitor to her. Allstate's Mayhem character, though, that's a different story. As a spokesperson for the ad agency behind the character put it directly, we wanted to kick Flo's ass. A chaotic personification of the trouble that can crop up throughout even the most typical and average lifestyle, Mayhem serves as an antithesis to both the bubbly, quirky flow and to the previous Allstate spokesperson that had been used for almost 15 years. In place of a calm setting with a deep-voiced narration, Mayhem would instead clog toilets, smash windows, fall on top of cars, and imitate toddlers, deer in the road, and teenagers committing hit and runs. While Mayhem wasn't exactly relatable in the traditional sense, because after all, he didn't rate potatoes on the internet, so how can I really trust him? The unexpected scenarios Mayhem portrayed still gave enough of Allstate's audience something to relate to, even if the ads were a little exaggerated. And because a lot of the ads were so exaggerated and sometimes a bit out of pocket, they also offered a comedic aspect that separated them even more from their competitors. As much as Flo's quirky little quips and Jake from State Farm's comment about his khakis were arguably a bit funny, as I was skimming through various Allstate Mayhem ads, I found myself giggling at them way more than any of the State Farm and Progressive clips I watched. Mayhem doesn't try too hard to be family-friendly and overly corporate, but instead focuses more on the entertainment aspect of the commercials. As much as Flo, Jake, and Mayhem all lead very adventurous lives in their commercials, sometimes the insurance companies don't feel the need to go all out with Roblox models and toilet splashing. Sometimes just keeping a simple, repeated premise and a no-frills recurring character is all it takes to create a recognizable campaign. The Aflac Duck is a great example of this. Having been around since 2000, its simplicity can't be understated. It's literally just a duck that says the name of the company. Aflac. And that's advertising, folks. As straightforward as the Aflac Duck is, he is definitely not lifeless or easily forgettable. Sometimes there's value in simplicity and the quack of a duck. There is something about talking live-action animals that really weirds me out. Like, do you want me to think he's a real duck or not? Who taught him to talk? Did he eat alphabet soup that went to his brain like Martha Speaks? I don't get it. The Aflac duck, though, fortunately doesn't say anything but Aflac, which some would argue is actually just a stylized version of a regular duck's quack so that he's not really talking at all. Aflac. There is the major medical pigeon, though, that represents the generic medical insurance competitor that does talk, and it successfully does kind of weird me out. Where's the doctor's boy? I think it's more the voice they picked for him more than anything, but the insurance bird breakdance battle definitely makes up for it. <laughs> Look at him go. As simple as a quacking duck mascot is, the various Aflac commercials are still pretty varied in their different scenarios. There's not much relatability to work with, but the silliness and the comedy elements are pretty clear. Above all else though, the sight of a duck and the company name itself make for a pretty recognizable combination. I mean, who doesn't love ducks? In a similar vein, the General Insurance Company also has a simple premise for their mascot, an animated character that's recurring in every ad and easily recognizable. Oh, and Shaq is here too for some reason. The General has existed as a mascot for the company with the same name for years, but it wasn't until the past couple of decades that he was brought to life as an animated little guy. Just, just a little guy. <laughs> 
I get that his original design was pretty short and stout, but in his older, somewhat low quality 3D rendered form, he just looks a little bit weird and maybe even a little creepy. It's giving Veggie Tales. Since 2016, Shaq has also accompanied the animated general in various commercials, which kind of doesn't do any favors for the poor animation style or just how strangely tiny the general is. It's actually become not that weird for Shaq to appear in different commercials for a variety of different products and brands. I'm glad he's living his best life. But apparently he chooses to continue with the general cameos because he used to be a customer himself and claims it's a loyalty thing. Which is nice, I guess, but I still think this is just a visually weird duo. Especially when they ride up in the whip together. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time. Despite Shaq's affiliation and the uncanny look of the animated general, unfortunately, none of the ads for the general really stand out to me much, and I think you could say the same for a lot of the other people who have seen these ads. He has a penguin sidekick that appears sometimes for some reason, and he has a cool red convertible, but other than that, I feel like the general just doesn't have a lot going for him. I feel like the best part of these ads is when they're ending, which is a little sassy remark, but also a reference to the jingle that plays at the end of the clips. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the general and save some time! It's kind of barely even a song, but I guess I saw enough of these ads on TV when I was younger, probably at 2am between George Lopez reruns on Nick at Night, that the general jingle is still burned in my brain. I think that might say more about me than the quality of the ads, though. As much as they've tried, the general and his company just never seemed to really stick with people, at least not the same way that Flo, Jake, and Mayhem did. In recent years, they have updated their look a bit to try and keep up with the times, including a newer animation style and uncovering the general's rarely seen eyes. Also, there's a new ad that just came out featuring the new style and bad luck Brian? I never thought I'd see the day that the General, Shaquille O'Neal, and a 10-year-old meme would collab, but here we are. If the General has one of the most underperforming insurance ad campaigns as far as relatability, comedy, and general popularity goes, then Geico is arguably the exact opposite. Geico has seemingly one of the most varied and yet most popular selection of commercials out of them all. The Geico Gecko surfaced in 1999, just a year before the Affleck duck, except this guy fully talks. He has a British accent for some reason, and originally existed as just a play on words, because Gecko sounds like Geico, haha. <laughs> in the earliest commercials, customers would call him instead of the insurance company because of the similar name, which is a pretty good premise for an ad campaign, but what started as a set of a few ads eventually evolved into the gecko being branded as the official spokesperson, um, spokes reptile, for the company. Sometimes he talks a little, sometimes he talks a lot, sometimes he's doing a silly little dance, and sometimes he's just taking a stroll. No matter what the Geico Gecko does though, he's always easy to spot and I'd say is pretty memorable as a reptile with a British accent advertising for an insurance company. The Gecko is still Geico's mainstay mascot, but his ads have been intermingled with other campaigns over the years. And while other companies have also varied their ads with different characters and styles, Geico's cast of characters seems to have stuck with its audience way more than the others. Similar to the talking gecko is Maxwell the Pig, originally used as a representation of the little piggy that squealed all the way home in the classic nursery rhyme. Oh, cool. Because this ad so abruptly introduces the pig, and how intentionally annoying his squeals are meant to be, this commercial very quickly cemented itself in the minds of its audience, and later inspired multiple other Maxwell ads to come after it. Despite Geico's competition mostly referencing the aspects of their insurance, like how great their coverage is or how low their rates are, Geico, even from the beginning, just didn't seem to harp too much on the informational side of things, because that would be boring. They basically just said, hey, we're the best, and then showed a talking animal for the rest of the commercial. 
Now, I'm obviously not a marketing major or anything, so I couldn't tell you if this was the right move or not, but as far as a public image and cognizance of the brand are concerned, talking or screaming animals seemed to do the trick. This was later proven correct again when the infamous Hump Day commercial aired, and a talking camel, of all things, really took off. <laughs> Leslie, guess what today is? It's Hump Day. Hump Day! Get happy, yeah. get Geico. Hump Day has apparently been a term for Wednesday since the 50s, but the Geico camel is the one that introduced me to it personally, as I'm sure is true for a lot of other people, and particularly brought it to life. It's weird to remember through all of the talking animals and goofy jokes that this is still an insurance company we're talking about. Something so mundane, tedious, and even really despised by some people. But sometimes the best marketing is simply brand recognition, and Geico seems to recognize this and do whatever it takes to make sure that they're remembered. And they didn't just stop at the talking animals. Since the gecko's first appearance, Geico has gotten even more bold, you could say, with its various advertising campaigns. There are other popular gecko commercial mascots, such as the talking pothole, the stack of money that stalks its victims, I mean potential customers, and of course, the infamous cavemen. What started as a promotion of how easy it is to save with Geico's service, so easy a caveman could do it, eventually turned into a whole caveman saga. After a short three-episode story as the caveman's initial introduction, these characters and the popularity surrounding them pretty quickly took off. Jake from State Farm had nothing on, admittedly, Geico advertising as a whole, but especially the Geico cavemen. The dry, satirical humor was the entire focal point of this campaign. After the initial three clips, the ads featuring these characters weren't even accompanied by any narration about how easy Geico was to use, let alone anything else about Geico's service. These guys were just so recognizable that they were featured in multiple commercials that followed up on the original joke at their expense, most of the time only even featuring the Geico name for all of a few seconds. This is the campaign that really cemented Geico as the company with the funny ads. People loved these bits, all the other ads included, but especially the one with the cavemen that are oppressed and condescended. If the general public being obsessed with some insurance company's fictional cavemen seem strange, it gets weirder because these guys weren't limited to just TV commercials. There was actually a dedicated caveman interactive website that existed to build even more hype around the characters, and eventually a caveman TV sitcom that featured the three characters from the ads. And for an extra added twist, the actress who plays Flo was featured in one of the episodes, as if the web of insurance company mascots needed to be any more convoluted. If the existence of a Geico caveman sitcom doesn't fully highlight the cultural significance of insurance company mascots, then I don't know what will. The channel Denville has a whole feature-length documentary-style video about the entire caveman saga, and I really recommend giving it a watch if you remember these ads or liked them back in the day, because there's a lot more to the story than I ever would have guessed, and Denville does a great job at chronicling it all. A good amount of Geico ads are currently catalogued on their website as well as their YouTube channel, just like most of the other companies we've covered have done. And I know I'm a broken record here, but for a company and an insurance company of all things, to reach a point where the general public is so interested in their advertisements that they intentionally seek them out to watch them again, it just really says something about their place in pop culture. Although I haven't actively watched cable TV, let alone the commercials that play during it, for a good few years now, I still can't help but think of these ads every now and again. Especially as an American living in Australia, when I sometimes catch some Australian ads on TV, I think of how wacky and wild some of the ads I grew up watching back in the US could get. And it's hard not to think about these commercials as a whole without thinking of the epic battle of the insurance campaign mascots that still rages on today. I mean, how could I forget these commercials that have brought so many eyes and so much notoriety to these companies that they're featured in video games, selling merch, and creating TV shows? After watching hours of insurance advertisements for this video, though, I think I'm all insuranced out for now. Maybe I'll go watch some George Lopez reruns instead. Do they still do those?
A huge thank you to Kayla Geary, Bunzo, Dylan Webb, Joe Cheesman, Johan Ake, Kevin Evans, Mark Kent, M. Wee, Paige, Paper Sam, Sarah, The Goomba Mattress, Unan Almondor, and the rest of my patrons for supporting me. Be sure to sign up with Jellygressive Insurance for great coverage, including 24-7 thumbs-up support and free virtual jelly beans when you sign up.